our next lesson is an introduction to quadrilaterals and the criterion for perpendicularity. Over the next three lessons, we're going to hit this standard, GPE-4, which is to use coordinates to prove simple geometric theorems algebraically. For example, prove or disprove that a figure defined by four given points in the coordinate plane is a rectangle. So we're proving things about different quadrilaterals, we must know what those properties are. So we'll start with that today. The second part of this lesson, which is proving the slope criteria for perpendicular lines, and we'll use them to solve geometric problems. Let's get started. Before lesson four, in your student materials, that's before page 16, there's a blank piece of paper, okay? I want you to use that blank piece of paper to draw and then write these descriptions of six quadrilaterals. So there's only three here on the page, but there's three more on the next page. So make sure you have enough space on that page to copy down these definitions and then important properties about the diagonals. So first, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. That's the definition. The first one is the definition. And then an important property about the diagonals is the diagonals will bisect each other. Now, we've not used the word bisect for several weeks. Again, bisect means to, to sect means cut, bi means two. So we're cutting it in half. And so this diagonal is going to cut this diagonal in half. And the, the same is also true for the other diagonal, that this diagonal is also being cut in half. And so the diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram. I wish we had the time to go back and prove that, which we can prove it using you know side, 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 and side angle, side, those other triangle um, congruence things we learned about earlier in this year. Uh, but just for the sake of time, trust me that the diagonals do bisect each other. Next is an isosceles trapezoid. Now, a trapezoid by itself also is interesting, um, but we'll talk about an, um, an important property about isosceles trapezoids. First of all, the definition of a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. That's true for all trapezoids. And an isosceles trapezoid has the other two sides being congruent. Okay. Now, the important property about the diagonals of, a, of an isosceles trapezoid is that the diagonals are congruent. Those are the same length. Those two diagonals are the same length in an isosceles trapezoid. The next one is a kite. Now, I know that you think of a kite flying up in the sky, and most kites, the stereotypical kite, is the same name in geometry, a kite. And a kite is defined as a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. I should have had um, the word adjacent right here. With two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So those two are congruent and those two are congruent. And the important property about the diagonals in a kite is that the diagonals are perpendicular. Okay, so once you have those three written down, make sure you have space for three more to be written down on the next page. So next we have a rectangle. And a rectangle is defined to be a quadrilateral with four right angles. There are four right angles in a rectangle. And an important property about the diagonals of a rectangle is that they are congruent. Our next shape is a rhombus which you may have called a diamond in previous classes in elementary school. I have no idea why they don't just teach the word rhombus from the start, but we'll call it rhombus in this class. And a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four congruent sides. And the important property about rhombuses is that the diagonals are perpendicular. Last but certainly not least is a square. A square is a quadrilateral with four right angles, if you can see that, and four congruent sides. So a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. And you won't be surprised then that the property about diagonals is the same as rectangle and rhombus, where the diagonals are both congruent 
and perpendicular. So those are the six quadrilaterals, the definitions, and an important property about the diagonals that you need to know about these quadrilaterals. And again, over the next three lessons, we'll be providing tools to determine whether or not a shape um, is one of these quadrilaterals. Before we jump into Engage New York, I wanted to show you this GeoGebra file to get you thinking about perpendicularity. So I've constructed this red line and the blue line to always be perpendicular. Okay, now what I've done here is that I've also drawn um, from points B and point C, this will always be vertical to um, a vertical line through a point on the red line. Um, and then there's a horizontal line going through the intersection through A. And then this is also a vertical line um, down here going through a point on the blue line C. Now, the reason I did that is so that we can define um, slope. So let me kind of go here. Sure, that's fine. Slope is found to be the rise over run. So for the red line, this length right here is three, and the run is one, two, three, four, is four. Now for the blue line, the slope is going down from A to C, it's going down, one, two, three, four, negative four, and the run is three. And so you might notice that a three and a four show up in both of the slopes, okay? Let's see if that happens again if I move the points a little bit. Okay, here's another example. Um, now the slope for the red line, the rise is going to be three and the run is going to be six. And for the blue line, this, uh, the rise is going to be going down four, and the run is going to be two. Now, those aren't the same number, but if I simplify, I get one half here, and I get negative two over one over here. So again, I have this same number, uh, but when one is negative, okay? What we'll notice as you do this over and over again is that they're always negative reciprocals of each other. Meaning that they're negative, meaning one will be negative and one will be positive every single time. But that makes sense. If they were 90 degrees, then one's going to go up and one's going to go down. They can't both have, they can't, can't both be going up, but they both can't be going down. And reciprocal is, again, the word where you flip the fraction over. That if this is going to go up to, that's going to have to go down to to compensate and keep it perpendicular. So they are negative reciprocals of each other. With that in mind, we'll now jump into our Engage New York materials. And actually, um, I'm looking for some blank space. So on this page, page 22, there's some blank page below this diagram. I'm going to prove this criteria for perpendicularity. And I will start off with this diagram, which will look similar to the one we looked at before. Go ahead and sketch this diagram. Again, the red line and the blue line are perpendicular to each other. The black lines are the x and the y axis. And then from point B, I've drawn a vertical line up to the x axis. And I've called labeled this point D. And then from C, I've drawn a line vertically up to the x-axis called this point E, um, and I have this diagram. Now, I'm going to label the red line, line L. And the slope of line L is equal to, let's see here, for this line, the rise is going to be this height right here, BD. And the run is going to be this length, which is AD. And the slope of the blue line, which I will call M, will be CE, actually negative CE, because it's going down, 
um, divided by AE. Okay, so um, keep in mind that these are perpendicular. Okay, the red and the blue line are perpendicular. I'm defining it that way. And um, I will call the length of this angle x, the measure of that angle x, and the measure of this angle right here, y. Now, based on the fact that x, y, and 90 degrees all make the straight line of the x-axis, then they must add together to be 180. Okay, so now look at this as a triangle. Now, one angle is x, and one angle is 90 degrees, and we know in a triangle the angles add up to be 180, so that means that this angle must be y, because I know that x plus 90 plus y is 180. Similarly, for this triangle, I have y and 90, and because this is a triangle, the angles must add up to be 180 degrees, and so this angle must be x, because y plus 90 plus x equals 180 degrees. So what that means is that these two triangles, the two green triangles I have drawn here, must be similar by the angle-angle similarity criteria. Keep in mind that the corresponding points, you know, that the, the similarity statement must have corresponding parts. B with angle Y corresponds to A. D is the 90 degree angle which corresponds with E. And A, this angle X, corresponds with C and the other one. All right. Now that we know that these triangles are similar, then there are some within figure ratios that must be the same between the two triangles. Specifically, I'll look at the ratio between BD over AD. What is that equal to in the other triangle? Well, BD, let me change colors here. BD connects angle Y with the 90 degree angle. That must correspond with AE. And um, AD is the angle in between the X angle and 90 degrees, which must be this right here, which is CE. Now notice that this is the slope of line L. And the slope of line M is still negative CE over AE. Let's go to example three. Points 0, 0, negative 4, 1, negative 3, 5, and 1, 4 are the vertices of parallelogram OABC. Is this parallelogram a rectangle? Well, Remember from the very, very beginning of this video that a rectangle is defined to be a quadrilateral with four right angles. Now, right angle means perpendicular, so I can look at the slopes of each of these and determine if every pair of adjacent sides has negative reciprocal slopes. So for the slope of OA is, let's see here, left or right, I'm going down one and I'm running one, two, three, four, negative one fourth. The slope of AB is I'm going up four and I'm going, I'm running one. Okay, now just looking at those two, four over one and negative one fourth are negative reciprocals of each other. So this must be a right angle. Now from B to C, I get a slope of negative one-fourth, and C to O, I have a slope of 4 over 1. So every pair of adjacent sides have slopes that are negative reciprocals. So the answer is yes. All four angles are right angles because each pair of adjacent sides have slopes that are negative reciprocals of each other. This video was an introduction to the properties of quadrilaterals, and we proved the criterion for perpendicularity. Thank you for watching.